Hey, what's going on everybody? It's the Dean List, and today I'm going to be bringing you my first look impression video for the new hero Wraith that comes out in tomorrow's 41 patch. Now in this video, I'm not going to give you a deck build. In the Wukong video that I did three weeks back, some people left some negative feedback because I created the build without fully testing it. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the cards that I think are going to work well with Wraith's kit, and how I believe he's going to fit in the current meta. With that being said, I want to get right into this video. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, that bell, so you can be the first person to know when I release new videos. Tomorrow I'm going to be live streaming Wraith and testing out builds all night long starting around 6pm Eastern Time, so definitely tune in for that. Now based on the information that has been released about Wraith thus far, I would classify him as an assassin. He has 0.6 scaling on his basic attack, so that's more than your average caster, but it's less than a carry. Essentially, you could consider him a ranged fighter when it comes to his basic attack scaling. In terms of his kit, he has one ability that does damage, and that's his long range snipe knock knock. The move has one scaling and a 6 second cooldown. Now if you land a killing blow on a minion or an enemy hero, then the cooldown is reduced to 2 seconds. This ability is going to make him great at last hitting in early game, and either mid lane or off lane. Essentially, you can pretty much stay under your tower, or close to your tower, and use this ability to secure last hits without having to worry about getting ganked by the enemy jungler, or poked by the opposing mid laner, or carrying support if you're in the off lane. The snipe also has a range that's similar to Sparrow's piercing shot, and it can penetrate geometry, so it's definitely going to be a great ability for securing kills. Now in this video I'm not really going to focus on his other abilities, that's not really the main purpose of this video. What I wanted to talk about is some of the cards that I think are going to be great for Wraith. So some of the cards that I'm going to be testing out in my live stream tomorrow are going to be Empyrean Mask, Tainted Magic, Thick Blood, Hydroverser, and Teleblink. I think all these cards have great synergy with his abilities. Empyrean Mask is a versatile card early game and it's going to allow you to toggle between 24 power, 12 ability and 16 basic armor, and 1.2 mana regen. Now I think this is going to be a great card, so you know, you're going to start with your health potion or mana potion and your healer token, and then as soon as you grab your rewards, when you back for 3 points, you can go straight into your Empyrean Mask. So around like 7 or 8 card points, you can grab your Empyrean Mask. That's what I'm thinking that I'm going to do to start off the build. The next card that I want to talk about is Tainted Magic. Now I think Tainted Magic is going to have a lot of synergy with his long range poke, especially while you're in lane. This is going to give you the ability to poke late game and do a ton of damage to tanky heroes like Severog, Rampage, and Richter. Thick Blood is another card that almost all mid laners should be running at this point in the game, uh, with the prevalence of Phase, Chimera, and Rampage. This card applies a Blight to the enemy um, when you use any kind of ability, and a Blight decreases healing factor by 40%, so it's a very useful card. In my opinion, this card has made um, Rampage almost irrelevant at this point, just because if you're running this card or a couple people on your team are running this card and he pops his ultimate, then his healing factor is pretty much all mitigated and he's just a huge target. It also helps with phase a lot. It affects her health regen and the health regen that she transfers over to the person that she's attached to. Now, Hydroverser is another card that I think is going to work very well with Wraith. He has a very high mana pool since he's classified as a caster. When he's level 15, he's actually going to have 1232 mana. But at the same time, he doesn't have any mana intensive moves. In fact, the only ability that you're really going to be spamming is going to be his knock knock. And that ability replenishes mana if you land a killing blow on a minion or on an enemy hero. So because of that, I think Hydroverse is going to be a great card to maximize his damage output. Last but not least, I think Teleblink is a great card for him. With this ultimate that allows you to enter the Shadow Plane, Teleblink could be a very good initiating card. You could simply use Teleblink to get within range of opposing heroes, and then use your ultimate to enter the Shadow Plane. Alternatively, you could use your ultimate and then use Teleblink to escape sticky situations. Overall, especially with the nerf to Stasis Gem, they increased the CP of the card from 5 to 6. I think that Teleblink is a must-have card on Wraith. Now, in regards to how Wraith will fit into the current meta, I think that he's going to be a welcome addition. So what do I mean by that? Although I still believe that Bellica is the number one mid-caster and she's a must-pick in competitive play, I can see Wraith being picked to counter certain heroes or certain team comps. As a long-range assassin, Wraith is a perfect counter pick to heroes like Morgish who need to be up close to deal consistent damage with their abilities. In lane, a Wraith could just out-poker and out-farm Morgish by using his knock-knock ability. Wraith also counters melee carries like Wukong, Serith, and Yen. All of these characters have gap closes, but Wraith can just negate these abilities by using his back it up ability. Whereas mid laners like Gideon, Gadget, Howitzer, and Morgus are going to struggle with melee characters once you get to mid to late game, Wraith is going to flourish. Now with that being said, positioning will be key with Wraith. He doesn't have a reliable escape except his ultimate, so knowing where enemies are at all times is going to be important with him. You want to play him aggressively and poke enemies from a distance, but you don't want to put yourself out of position and leave yourself open to ganks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, leave a like and a comment down below. Like I said earlier in this video, I'm going to be live streaming tomorrow starting around 6 p.m. Eastern Time, so be on the lookout for that. 
With that being said, I'm excited to play the new hero Wraith, and I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Peace.